So I put together this microscope rig to take a closer look at the scroll saw blades that I've been using in order to try and track down some of the blade drift issues. And so I'll just quickly show some parts of this. So I've got a Raspberry Pi HQ camera, which is 12 megapixels, and then connected to the Articam UVC um, webcam adapter, which just lets me plug it in over USB to my normal computer instead of a Raspberry Pi. It's just easier. A little microscope light. And then I have this blade holder so that I can rotate the blade to different angles. And this is all mounted on a linear rail so that I can scan across to look at different parts of the blade. This extrusion, which you might not have seen before, is nano beam, which is a 5mm extrusion that has little tiny T-nuts um, and uses little M1.2 screws. Um, I just had that laying around, so it was good use for it. And it works well. And then this is just to give some higher contrast. Alright, so let's swap to the computer and we can take a look at the images. Let's quickly look at some of the blades that I've been using. This first one is the Flying Dutchman Superior Puzzle Blade. It has a very high uh, tooth per inch count TPI and I think this is what was causing the blade drift because the sawdust had nowhere to go between each of the teeth and since I have this mounted on the linear axis I can easily pan over and look at the entire blade you can see that it's you know pretty amazing that they can cut these features but at the same time the finish quality on them is not nearly as nice as say something like an exacto blade where you have a very fine polished surface so at some point in life it would be fun to grind my own scroll saw blades and I've got it rotated now and you can see the top surface unfortunately the depth of field of this lens is very small so you I can't even focus the top and bottom of the teeth at the same point I've tried some focus stacking and it does not turn out super great but yeah you can see that there's quite a bit of roughness on the teeth there I don't think that actually matters but it's just kind of cool to look at alright so let me swap the blades and we'll take a look at the next one Okay, this is the Pegas double skip blade. So it has two teeth in a row and then a very large gullet, which to my eye looks like they cut all of the teeth on there as normal and then grind off the other one where you see that it looks like there would be a tooth there. But has just been eaten away. This blade is actually recommended for very thin materials on the Pegas chart whereas their other blade that I have, the Modified Geometry MGT blade, is also cut straight in my experience but isn't recommended for as thin of materials. But so this one has been working well for me so far. So if I rotate this and bring this back into view, we can get a top down look. And I think this is pretty sure this is a used blade because of all the all the white stuff is I think wood particles dust. From top down it's really hard to actually see anything. 
the nice thing about this Arducam adapter that I'm using is that you get 1080p at 60 frames per second over USB but also up to the full 12 megapixels at 10 FPS I think and that's what I use for capturing stills alright this is the Pegas MGT blade that I was talking about which has very large space between the teeth the teeth are actually fairly tall and what's interesting is if I tilt this a little bit you can really see a a burr that runs down the center line alternating on the teeth which looks like they relieve part of the tooth in an alternating pattern and this one is also cutting very straight in my experience so far and just for a bit of comparison this is a lightly used exacto blade that has a really nice surface finish on the grinding and so I'm you know just curious if you could ever get a scroll saw blade with that kind of surface finish okay and so I took a couple panoramas of the three blades and stitched them together so here is that Pegas MGT blade and you can see what I'm talking about here where you have a relief cut into this tooth that follows through the gullet and then it occurs on the next skip tooth on this side and so this one has that same pattern cut into the other side which matches this tooth and this is kind of that burr line I think either from stamping or grinding I'd love to know which uh, that gives you this my theory is that this relief actually helps push the sawdust to the side of it and if you dump sawdust onto alternating sides then the blade shouldn't get pushed one way or the other uh, but it'll still move through that sawdust um, that's my guess on the theory I'm not totally sure and so the next one is the Flying Dutchman Superior Puzzle Blade the very high tooth count nothing much to see here but the teeth are not super cleanly formed and it's pretty hard to image because of this blued steel um, yep and then the double skip which I have upside down for some reason but you can really see the I, I don't want to say that it looks bad but because I don't think it really affects the cutting performance but kind of looks like somebody just ate these uh, teeth that are out and then the only other thing that I can see is it kind of looks like the one tooth is uh, what would it be raked uh, one way and I assume the other one has the same pattern on the other side and then it repeats on this next one and I guess that just gives some relief or something to the blade, not totally sure yet and here's a clip showing how I did some better blade drift testing on a revamped design that combines some of the properties of 
two older machines and I'll have a video covering more on that later but you can see I just have a dial indicator clamped to the table and I zero that out to the blade and then pull it off make a cut forward for 12 or 15 millimeters on these tests and then while the blade is still captive in the wood I can remeasure with the dial indicator and the blade does deflect maybe half a thou or something because of the spring force but this gave me a good way to test different blades and align the machine to get rid of drift and at this point it seems like everything is dialed in to the point that I can cut almost dead straight so it's time to cut some bigger puzzles.